A handful of the UP's 310,000 residents trace their roots to the First Peoples, who lived off the land back when glaciers still dominated the landscape. Many others are descendants of European immigrants who came to work in the lumber, railroad, and mining industries. 40 miles east of Republic is the small community of Gwyn. It was originally built as an iron mining town in the early 1900s when Michigan led the nation in iron ore production with more than 400 mines. Today, only one functioning mine remains, and Gwyn has become an outdoor recreation destination. With over 52 lakes surrounded by lush forest, the woods are rich with whitetail bucks, bear, and various game birds. That's why Dennis Stachowicz moved to Gwyn 17 years ago. He wanted a place where he could live off the land. Boy, that's a happy sound. Yes. Eager dogs. Nice to meet you. It's midweek and day two of the rough grouse hunting season, a beautiful bird that's prized for its exquisite flavor and the challenge it presents to wing shooters. Success of grouse hunting isn't measured by the number of birds you bag. It's the number of flushes or times you force a bird to take flight. Come here, buddy. Got bud. Got it! I'll bring the dog up to you. That bird came up behind that pine tree. I had one shot at him here, and then as he came over, I managed to squeeze a second one off here. Yep, up, Panzer! Find dead bird, come on, find it. Find it. Do you know if he hit it or not? I did not see feathers at any point. Well, I think he would have found it by now, but- we'll... If it was winged. Yeah. yeah. In two hours, Panzer tracked nearly 10 miles of dense forest and flushed 14 birds. Nice work, Panzer. Come on, buddy. Get back to the trail, dude. However, we never got a clean shot off. Thankfully, Dennis bagged a bird the day before. Well, we have been blessed with a bird. The best meat on them is the breast that's found here. This is white meat, and it's yep. probably some of the best you're going to find. It's eating them that got me into hunting them. I bet. When I clean them, I don't pluck them or anything like that. I just debreast them. Yeah, you simply grab the skin. Bust them right out of the animal. Bust it right out like this. Panzer has a tooth mark in it, and it looks like I centered it because we have a BB right there. Yep. Go underneath, cut off the wing, take the back side, pull it up, and you have grouse breast. The bowl of grouse meat equates to 20 plus hours of trudging through the wilderness, not to mention countless hours of training the dogs. How much game do you eat a year? You know, between the brook trout and the rough grouse and the venison, we do a fair amount of fantastic. supplemental feeding to right. ourselves. Dennis's grouse dish is a common recipe, butter, pancake mix, salt, pepper, and cream. Just the ratios vary. When you say a pound of butter, you're not kidding. No. Yeah. You no, actually, not kidding you actually are going to fry these in butter. Yep. Uh, now it's talking to us. It's a light dish. Creamy, buttery fried grouse served with a side of wild rice. The grouse is delicious. It's like the smell of leaves in the forest. Yeah. I mean, it just it just, just reminds me of the season it's shot in. Mm -hmm. mm. I appreciate you coming here. After working the mines, many Finns, including Ron's forefathers, took advantage of the Homestead Act of 1862, claiming land to farm. In addition to the fish heads, Ron contributes giant rutabagas from his experimental garden to the potluck meal. Should we put the meat into the ground real quick, since that's going to take five hours to cook? When you say buried in the ground, what do you mean? So we're going to make something called rosvapaisti, robber's roast. Yeah, because you know what? The robber has to hide the roast. It takes yeah. Yeah. Exactly goes quickly. Right. Yeah. The evidence is yeah, gone. Yeah, the evidence is gone. He just has a fire now. He's just sitting by the fire. Rika seasons a pork shoulder with garlic, salt, pepper, honey, and fresh cut thyme, then wraps it in layers of parchment paper, aluminum foil, newspaper, and finally, chicken wire. Earth ovens are used all over the world. Mark lines his cooking pit with field stones and Lake Superior rock. The roast is buried in sand and left to cook for hours. Great, then you can cook on top of this thing all day long. Yeah. As more guests arrive, Rika brings out a fresh farmhouse cheese to cook alongside the fire. 
Traditionally, this baked cheese, called yusta, is made with super-rich colostrum. That's the first milk that a cow offers after giving birth. I'm gonna sit here by the fire and watch the cheese cook. The cheese can be served warm or cold, sprinkled with cinnamon for dessert or youper style, fresh off the fire with local thimbleberry jam. The wild red berry is tart, sort of like a raspberry. Upper Peninsula goodness, thimbleberry yeah. jam. Mm. That's just off. absurdly good. And it gets all that scorch from the board. Heaven. Each summer, the Hepakoski family invites their Finnish friends and neighbors to share the food of their ancestors. Rika sent me down the road to grab a couple of dishes from Scott and Cindy Kayla. Cindy makes a Uper interpretation of Finnish fish bread called kalakuko. Scott keeps true to his grandmother's liver dumpling, or rupana recipe. Knock, knock. Oh, I hope you're Cindy. Pump. Are you lost? <laughs> no, it's just that I, I, Rika keeps sending me on errands mm -hmm. all day long yeah. to houses that I don't know, in neighborhoods that I don't know. Right. And everybody here, it's a small town. Doors are just open. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't lock them except at night. Right. And, and, and <laughs> or to keep me out. <laughs> so I've heard. Right. Scott is a Copper County native who feeds his family the deer he hunts and the fish he catches. I've eaten liver dumplings before. Okay. But fish bread, I've never heard of. It's like purier salmon. And then I don't really put a lot on it except onions. Onions gives it the juice, and I put a little salt and pepper, and I pre-bake my bacon. You now, put bacon inside. I your... put I put bacon in here also. This is just my, my little go-to meal, and that is that. And then we just kind of fold it up as best we can do. Since Scott was a young man, he's made his grandmother's rupana or liver dumplings for the special people in his life. First of all, you got grandma's grinder. I like to do things the old fashioned way a lot of times, so. Just like grandma, he doesn't need to measure. He stirs his ground beef livers with eggs, onions, flour, and oatmeal. A little bit of oatmeal. Ah, see, there you go. That takes some arm work. Right there, it's like a thick dough. The hanging ball test. That's ah, looking You wonderful. need a nice big plop like that. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. I make a patty out of it. Sort of like a hamburger patty. You just drop them in. As Scott simmers the dumplings for 35 minutes, back at the farm, it's time to dig up the main course. I think oh, I hit the... I hit wire. Yeah. I'm going to pull that sucker up. Yeah, baby. There we go. The robber's roast has been cooking in the ground for six hours. There you go. It smells fantastic. It smells good. Yeah, yeah we don't even need to taste it. Yeah, it's Let's right bring it inside. Looks good. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect is what it looks like. So you can't go wrong when you set it in the ground like that. Everyone has brought a dish to share. Liver dumplings, fish bread, fish head soup, Karelian pies, cabbage rolls, and a range of Finnish American desserts.